So, red pill week Don't. two. The sort of meta logistical thing this week would be balancing Story Hive with, you know, food. everything else. Everything else. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, it's it's been a very interesting. The thing is, is Dan and I are both freelancers, yeah, so to speak. So when we submitted to Story Hive, we couldn't just stop our whole world and then say, okay. Our main project in life has to be Story Hive. Uh, that's just not doable in the you know the facet that we have to pay bills. You, yeah, <laughs> you can't and you can't uh, assume that you're going to get it. Right. If you do that, you're going to probably be disappointed. Yes. Oh, se severely, severely disappointed. Um, so it's been interesting trying to balance um, maintaining the work that needs to be done for uh, Red Pill. And then also everything else. Yeah, because it's it's kind of this switchover period, like this switchover that you've got to do. I mean, the the ten thousand dollar grant is is enough that we can um, that we can afford to like not take a job or two. And eh, not really. No. Barely. No. Barely. <laughs> well, I mean, and it's also about like assessing how much yeah. ten thousand dollars is. You know, we are not getting. We're not getting ten thousand dollars <laughs> each. No, it's you know we're essentially getting paid for the day that we shoot. What are we? Oh, right. Right. Like the, this isn't a continuous job that we're being paid for. The, no. The ninety-five percent of our budget will be going towards other people helping us. And creating our, you know, our sets and you know, we're the basically, work. and this isn't even until the end of it, is the thing is we're basically paying ourselves enough to retroactively cover the cost of gasoline and food expenses. Basically, our expenses are covered as director and producer. Expenses are covered. That's about it. Um, however, we get our name on that, though. We do get our name on that, though, yeah. Which is really what the benefit of all this is. Yeah. Even ignoring the money, or aside from the money, uh, the money aspect of it, there is still this rollover in just energy and effort. Right. That it's like, okay, well, now you're, you're adding this in, and it's like, it's this period, like, for me in particular, this last week has been a lot of, okay, take things that were already on my plate and wrap them up. Right. Uh, and get them kind of out of the way so that more time can be focused into uh, into a red pill, particularly like the more um, front-loaded stuff. So I still need to get the animatic done, um, and I need to finalize the script. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're hiring crew. We're hiring crew. So yeah, that's what I've been kind of doing for the last week is just a lot of correspondence. So we're getting crew settled right now, uh, all of which have been attached to the program or the project, um, but we still don't have word back from our studio space. Yeah. So it's kind of like, are you interested and would you be available in a generic amount of time if we gave you a heads up? Yeah. Um, so we've had a few people come back already and say that, yeah, they're on board and they're totally interested, which is awesome because they're people we work with and they're our friends and we're super pumped about that. Um, on top of that, we're also dealing with uh, cast. So I put out a casting call, so to speak, um, and we've gotten about 20 applicants so far. So Dan and I are going to have to go and spend some time probably next week and cipher through the ones that we know we want to have an actual audition with. And uh, music, I've been I've been in contact with a couple uh, a couple musicians, um, one of whom is a, a duo that contacted me. Uh, I liked I liked their demo reel. Um, they didn't quite have anything that was like nailed mm -hmm. the 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 genre that uh, they were looking for, but they had stuff across a lot of different. Uh, a lot of different genres and so th they do seem to be quite flexible and I told them sort of the the outline and they seemed up for it so you know uh, we'll be back and forth there's a lot of actually there's a lot of diplomacy in this stage where you know you you're trying to convince people to do something for yeah. you um, but at the same time it's like you, they're trying to you know sort of 
it's like what are they going to get out of it and what are you going to get out of it and how can you arrive at a really good you know respectful mutually beneficial uh beneficial arrangement and you know and in dealing with that like there's this has actually been a really good uh good time for this because it's, it's a good chance to sort of go adult with the way that you end up so sure, one of yeah. one of the big problems that ends up coming up when you're working on stuff for absolutely zero budget and when everybody is just your friend that you've roped in is that there's there's a lack of of room to really maneuver with that yes you know they're your pals you can't just be like yo <laughs> dickweed <laughs> That's, that's You're not how I fired. agree. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah. um, or that it's like, that. It, particularly if, if someone you know who's a friend or an acquaintance, you know, is, has a creative skill that you mm. can't quite cover. Yeah. So like they're a musician and they're like, hey, I made this for you for your project. And it's like, well, it doesn't quite like, and you look at it and you go like, I like you, but this either A, isn't very good, or B, just doesn't fit. Right. You know, How maybe, do you handle that How do you situation? handle that? Yeah. yeah. And so it's it's really good to kind of be in, a, in an environment where, mm-hmm. you know, you can talk to people as fellow professionals, as fellow creators, and just sort of say this, like, hey, maybe just because you contact me doesn't mean that you're best for the thing. And... I've had people, I've had this happen before where people have called me up and been like, hey, we want you to do this thing. And I've just had to tell them, it's like, that's not in my wheelhouse. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. You know. And having that expectation set out in front of you can get you into trouble too. Yeah. So it's it's trying to have that balance. And I think the other thing to really mention is that when we sat down, even pre-applying to StoryHive, we said if we had a crew, we would pay them. Yeah. That was... That was our big, uh, that was sort of our first thing was that we're paying crew because all too often what ends up happening with grant projects and low budget projects is crew ends up coming. It's like everyone wants to pay their crew, but they still end up paying their crew last. Right. Um, and it's like, it's like, oh, well, the, the, f- the cream of the money, the top, like the, the first right off the top is like, all right, camera rental. All right you know, gear, all right, location, all right, actor, then, you know, it's like, and by the time you're getting down to crew, it's like, oh, well, we've only got a hundred bucks per person and it's going to be a 12 hour day. I hope you're okay with making eight bucks an hour. Right. Um, (laughs) It sucks, by the way. We both know this. (laughs) Yeah. You know, and it's like, eh. So, so we really wanted to kind of, uh, kind of reverse that. And we sat down like what we were going to, uh, going to pay people first and then it was like okay well now can we afford a red no like can we afford an fs7 maybe can we afford or maybe so it's like you know the suddenly the camera comes uh gets gets knocked down because you're and the thing is is that in a lot of a lot of people think that well that kind of front you know very front end kind of equipment rental is going to be the thing that makes the bigger difference. But right. I think at the end of the day, talented crew, it's it's not always in the most obvious ways, but mm-hmm. talented crew is going to have a bigger impact than just bringing your camera oh, totally. up a notch. Yeah. Well, and the other thing too is what a lot of people don't see, of course, is making the film, right? So the experience of the people actually creating it you know, in the moment, on the day of shooting, actually affects a lot of the artwork yeah. and how things are working. You know, if you have an actor who doesn't know where they're, where they're supposed to be or... Isn't used to the rhythm of used, being yeah, on set. Then you're going to have that performance affected by that. Oh, the worst is when you get an actor who, like, you know, they might be quite talented at stage, but they're not used to acting around a camera, mm-hmm. and so they look in the lens yeah. all the time. And it's like, you can't do that. Yeah. We're in a kind of a weird phase right now because there's a lot of uncertainty still because our location is such a key component to yeah. understanding like where we go from here. And, but we're on the other side of things, like we have people already locked in or locked in, you know, 
and it's kind of like I just want us to be three weeks from now. <laughs> yeah, I, I want us to be. I was really hoping that that phone call would come yesterday. Yeah, it didn't. Um, but it didn't. So so we don't know. So we're still we're still location is up in the air, and that's you know. Yeah. Eesh. Basically, I'm putting the producer pants on next week, and I'm giving them to the end of day Monday because they did say that they would need a week to find out yeah. whether or not the studio space would be available. So Monday, if I don't hear from them Tuesday morning, they will be getting a call yeah. from me. And that's fair. Being very nervous and uncertain. <laughs> <laughs> Putting on my confident pants because if I don't put the confident pants on, I won't have none. I mean, button it up to the top. Top level. Oh, top button. Top button. Top button. Um, the introvert to me is very scared by that. So aside from the general uh, and and regular, I mean, the, mm. the I think the thing that I want to drive home is that this kind of early uncertainty is very normal. Sure. It's not it's not worrisome yet. It it might get terrifying uh, down the road, but right now it's just kind of. It, it creates a little bit of anxiety, but I think everything does. Uh, though these these projects do have like once once the bigger things start falling into place or start start firming up, then yeah. suddenly everything does. Yeah. So it's like once location is locked, or like I, I shouldn't even say once location is locked. Once we're comfortable that we have a place to actually build this and we have a time booked mm -hmm. in order to do that, yeah. then suddenly we can call up all of our crew and be like, yo, January 16th. Right. You know. Mark, or tentative, mark it down, you know. You know, yeah, like that's, it's like that's the day we've got the studio, that's the day. And yeah. then, you know, and you can go down the, uh, you know, you can go down the list. And it's like mm -hmm. part of the reason why we haven't, why I'm not really firming anything up with uh, musicians yet is because, well, what's going to be the timeline on that? Exactly. Yeah. And that's the thing. We don't know. <laughs> we have no idea right now. Because if we end up doing, like, if we end up shooting mid-late January, well, mm -hmm. then it's like put a lot more, maybe do the music a lot sooner right. and like get a lot more work done on mm -hmm. it. Whereas if we're shooting super early January, like we're shooting on that, if we get that New Year's Day slot, yeah. then, well, all of a sudden you've got a month right. to to do post. Which would be comfortable. That's a yeah. comfortable process. That's very comfortable. Yeah. So <laughs> the producer in me, the, the very unexperienced producer in me, <laughs> is, you know, it, it, you can't, I think the one advice someone ever gave me about that kind of uncertainty is you can't think oh, it's January 16th already. Because if you do that, then you're just going to freak out. And you're going to be like, nothing's going to get done. Yeah. Everything's going to be a mess and we can't move forward. So I'm trying to really focus on, okay, I have a little list at home. And it's just like, who have you emailed? How have they responded? And, you know, what what are the next steps that you need to do? And I'm trying to really keep that in a, like a chronological order so that I can keep focused on that. So That's team good. power. Team power. So we're excited, we're nervous, we're very much enjoying uh, enjoying the experience. Mm -hmm. But we're making things happen, we're and next week happen. it'll be, I think, very interesting. Yes, next next week, next week things should, if things haven't started solidifying, then we'll probably be a lot more panicked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> by the time like December fifteenth rolls around, we're we're probably yeah. All right, so there's uh, there's this week's update. If anything super big happens, then we'll make sure to take the camera along for that. But otherwise, if it's just kind of going through, going through the routine, then expect another vlog uh, next week. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone, for for your support. Thank you for your votes, and thanks for watching. High five. High five. <laughs>